It's kind of depressing how you almost stop learning when you get out of college or school. I mean, living in itself is a learning experience, but most of the skills and knowledge you are exposed to when joining the workforce is funneled towards a specific job or a set of functions, geared towards your transformation into a more efficient and productive machine. Such a great asset to society and human development. And as you feel that you're losing yourself in that vortex of extra-specific and fancy business jargon, you'll probably find yourself wondering, why is your brain being squeezed out of your skull and squashed into a corporate mumble-jumble while there's so much incredible information out there, ready for you to absorb? So, as I was watching season 4 of Gilmore Girls and kind of jealous of Rory sitting in Yale surrounded by books, I just figured, why don't I create my own curriculum and create my own self-learning study routine? The tricky part of engaging in this sort of enterprise, of course, is being very clear in terms of purpose, scope, and available tools. Resources, time, and attention are naturally limited. Even when one has the privilege to dedicate their whole life to academia, so in a situation where you have several more areas in your life to balance, and in my case that's a job, a business, and a household, it is important to identify your boundaries. My purpose was very clear, however. I was not looking for more expertise in my particularly line of work or any other type of hyper-profitable entrepreneurial skill. I wanted a well-rounded curriculum, something that tapped into my curiosity and not my financial fulfillment. My intention was to explore areas of interest that I never felt allowed to explore before, because they didn't align themselves with the extra-specific financial law education I had familiarized myself with over the years. In terms of scope, I was also very clear that I wanted several different areas of interest instead of funneling into one topic only. As I glanced at my bookcases, I tried to capture major areas of knowledge where I felt lacking and came up with economics and politics, literature, psychology and philosophy. As the purpose of this experience was to find an escape mechanism from a formal education I couldn't afford to return to, it was also very clear that this was going to be a solo journey, a scholar stuck in an ivory tower type of scenario, and I didn't want to be hindered by the pace of online classes or other collective experiences. So my idea was to start from a fairly good main book, which would act as my self-appointed textbook, and then branch out to other materials I could research from reputable sources. As this was a fairly new idea, and I wanted to make sure I wasn't making an investment I couldn't keep up with, I decided to start my search in the comfort of my own shelves, and I picked four books that could act as main repositories of information and that were still on my to-be-read list. So for economics and politics, I started with the classical Capital and Ideology by Thomas Piketty, and I was particularly curious about this one because I am aware of a lot of the criticism other economists have about his ideas, and I wanted to make sure I was reading the source material and confronting it with a different analysis. For literature, I wanted to pick a classic I never read before, and of course I wanted to go with Lemis, a beautiful edition divided into five different volumes that someone threw to the trash outside my house, and I decided I had to adopt it. For psychology, I picked up again Carl Jung's Essential Works, which I had started a year ago but never actually studied it in depth. And finally, for philosophy, I picked up my tiny little hardcover version of Beyond Good and Evil. 
The excellent thing about these four titles is that the internet is overflowing with materials and different papers and critiques that cover every inch of these books, which means I was allowing myself for different interpretations of what I was reading, and the possibility to confront my own notes and insights with those of other students and scholars around the world. And the most enjoyable part began when I put all of this onto paper, creating my own self-learning curriculum. Just like a short version of a traditional syllabus I would be handed out in college. Stating the date comprising my learning experience from this month to February 2023, I wrote the title of each book and the table of contents so I could guide myself easily as I read and annotated each one. And then, looking at my schedule, my usual workflow and responsibilities, I try to find a bit of time during the week to dedicate to the study of each one of these books, creating a very minimal and laid-back self-learning schedule that would help me associate certain days of the week to certain topics. And here, I try to follow the same practices I have been preaching since August this year. Instead of blocking my calendar, I'm trying to set broad goals for myself, avoiding detailed instructions or a rigid schedule, just enjoying the idea that the biggest goal is to gain momentum and consistently pick up these books three or four times per week when I have the time during the day, not forcing myself to read a specific amount of chapters or pages but rather slowly absorbing the information as I go, meditating on these valuable lessons and making slow progress that at the end of several months will have more impact than quick bursts of reading or an excess of information that wouldn't allow me to connect the dots. So I'm very happy to start this self-learning journey and recapture a bit of the wonder of wisdom gathering through books, articles, and notes. And I found a really good companion on this journey, and that is Shortform, who is kindly partnering with me today for this video. With short form, you can learn the ideas from all the non-fiction books you've ever wanted to read. You get really detailed summaries on so many books, and if you're thinking, well, I can find a lot of summaries on the internet, this is where it gets interesting. Instead of just summarizing the books, short form actually goes beyond that, adding interactive exercises to help you apply the ideas you've just learned, as well as smart insights, allowing you to connect the dots and understanding everything at a deeper level. For instance, I can use short form to access another Thomas Piketty book, Capital in the 21st Century, as well as short form's whole library of history, psychology and philosophy books, which I can use to get more in-depth insights on these topics during my learning journey. And because I'm able to access these summaries, I always look forward to the full experience to buy the full book, while always being able to go back to short form to at least remember the key points. Short form drops new book guides and articles every week, and subscribers actually get to vote on what books to cover. So to get a 5 days of unlimited access to test it out and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription, you can join short form through my special link down below. I really hope you've enjoyed today's video and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!